The fossil record can be a frustrating resource to work with. So often, the remains of prehistoric organisms that are found within our planet's rocks are fragmentary or damaged, due to the harsh natural processes they're subjected to in the time between death and discovery, leaving us with just tantalising glimpses into the mysterious past of our world. This uncertain nature of the fossil record is especially prevalent in the case of mammals, with a lot of our evidence of mammalian evolution based on isolated teeth and bones which, while they can still inform paleontologists about a great deal, are obviously nowhere near as remarkable as more complete skeletons. But then, every once in a while, you come across something special. This was the case with a discovery from the world-famous Messel Pit in Germany, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that is renowned for producing some stunningly complete remains of animals that lived in the Middle Eocene. The Messel Pit represents an environment that was once a lake with a very still anoxic environment in the lower levels of its waters, resulting in the exceptional preservation of many organisms. A variety of incredible fossils have been found here, with many even preserving traces of soft tissues, but one of the most spectacular Messel Pit finds has to be the almost complete skeleton of a pregnant prehistoric horse. The genus this ancient equoid belongs to is called Eurohippus, and the species, Mesolensis, is actually the most commonly found kind of early horse at the Messel Pit, with over 40 specimens having been uncovered. Amazingly, since the 1980s, eight different examples of pregnant Eurohippus mares have been unearthed from the pit, with the best preserved one described in a paper published in 2015. This Eurohippus individual was in a very late stage of gestation when she died, and the conditions of her death mean that a great deal about early equoid reproduction can be learnt from this animal. The thing that makes this fossil specimen in particular so special is the fact that it's the earliest record of the uterine system of any placental mammal. That's right, it's not just the mother and fetal skeletons that are preserved in the rock, but a black shadow that could be seen covering the fetus before the fossil was prepared and transferred into epoxy resin seems to also be the remains of the uteroplacenta. The way in which this organ was preserved is actually pretty fascinating. Once the equoid fell into the lake and sank deep down into the water, some bacterial decomposition of the soft tissue started to take place. However, as the bacteria did this, they produced carbon dioxide, which actually then reacted with dissolved iron in the water, leading to the precipitation of iron carbonate minerals such as ciderite. The bacteria was then covered in this ciderite, meaning they effectively ended up fossilizing themselves. The thin mat of bacteria that formed over the soft tissue was then permeated by organic material such as kerogen, leading to the black coloration, and very usefully for paleontologists, perfectly preserving the outline of the soft tissue uteroplacenta. As explained by the paper, this means that what we have is not technically direct preservation of the soft tissue, but instead a byproduct of the metabolism of bacteria. However, it still enables paleontologists to examine the overall shape and extent of this organ, an incredible thing to be able to do, considering this animal has been dead for about 47 million years. In order to properly examine the fetal bones, since they are mostly still covered by the remains of the uteroplacenta and are strongly compressed, micro x-ray scanning was used to more properly determine the anatomy and condition of the fetus. The fact that the fetal bones are all pretty much still attached to each other in their original positions and that almost all of the baby is preserved suggests that the amnion, which is the part of the placenta that actually encloses the fetus, was still intact when the mother sank down to the lake bed. Some interesting comparisons between the reproductive anatomy of Eurohippus and modern horses have been made here too, with the paper noting how the significantly greater extent of the uteroplacenta around the fetus in the fossil is very similar to the condition in living pregnant mares. Additionally, the researchers attempted to estimate an approximate gestation period for this ancient horse. They assumed that it would likely have been shorter than that of modern horses, so fewer than 11 months, especially since there's an apparent relationship between larger body size in mammals and longer gestation periods. The body weight of Eurohippus has been estimated at around 5 to 6.5 kilograms, which the paleontologists point out is comparable to a certain species of living antelope called the blue diker, which also has a sort of similar build. Therefore, they suggest that the equoid may have had a similar gestation period to the range of 201 to 213 days seen in the antelopes, stating that at least 200 days seems likely. Another interesting bit of paleobiology that has been revealed by this fossil is the number of offspring produced at one time by this equoid. Seeing as the blue diker gives birth to just one baby at a time, as well as the fact that all known records of pregnant Eurohippus individuals carry one fetus, it seems safe to assume that these ancient horses produced one offspring at a time. Plus, considering that the twinning rate in modern horses is incredibly low, this would appear to support such an assumption. So, how did this tiny prehistoric horse actually die and as such come to be fossilised in this remarkable way? 
Well, this question is one of the many the paleontologists had in mind as they were studying her. Using the technique of high-resolution micro x-ray scanning to fully reveal the position of the fetal bones, they could see that the baby was upside down relative to the mother's bones, and from the level of development of the bones and teeth of the foal, it's clear that this individual was very close to being born. It's noted how the forelimbs of the fetus had not yet been stretched out towards the birth canal, and that the animal's thorax had not yet been turned, but this is very normal at the stage just before the birthing process in modern horses begins. As a result of all the normal looking positions of the fetus, it's concluded that the cause of death likely did not have anything to do with the birth process itself. So, what did kill these animals? Well, some potential clues might be gained by looking at the structure of the utero placenta. A notable wrinkled texture actually covers almost all of the remains of the organ, a condition that actually occurs in living horses just after they've given birth to a foal and the organ starts to change back to its non-pregnant state, when the outer muscular layer of the uterus starts to contract. Well, clearly it wasn't the result of having already given birth that caused this wrinkling texture to form in our Eurohippus, but the authors explain how such a texture is actually also known to form in the events that the uterine wall becomes ruptured at a late stage of pregnancy, causing some contraction of the uterus but not necessarily meaning that the fetus would be pushed out. So, they suggest, it's possible that some kind of injury inflicted on this poor little mare just before or at the time of her death caused the uterus to rupture and this wrinkling to form. What exactly caused this trauma may never be known for certain, but eventually this little horse and her baby would end up being preserved for almost 50 million years thanks to the location in which they died, meaning that paleontologists and fascinated people such as myself get to tell the story of this pregnant prehistoric horse all this time later. Even though she's gone, there's still a record of her life and death that has revealed so much about this species and the way they reproduced. Truly a stunning fossil. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters too, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters Amanda Von Nordek, Archianthus, Bella Anderson, Dhruv Srivastava, Elijah Carrion, George Vodtech, Greg Silvernail, Just F. Max, Corey Peterson, Laura Sanborn, Mike Pace, Persian Boy, Robert Thomas, Staniforth Hopkins, and Tiffany Tramell. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.